Will, go ahead. What's up, Trajan? This is uh, Will Guillory from The Athletic. And uh, I'm going to just, were you guys surprised at all to see uh, Kyra fall to you at 13? And what are the attributes you guys like the most, you know, just to select him right there? Well, we did we did think he might go ahead of us, um, but he was uh, definitely a target of ours. And for him to get to us, we're extremely ecstatic. Um, he was a guy that we followed the whole year, watched a ton of tape on, and our whole scouting group did a lot of work and really liked him. Um, so I, Griff talked a little bit about his personality, his character, very hardworking, um, small-town kid. And for him to excel at Alabama like he did in his two years when he reclassified up from high school was kind of tremendous. And that just shows his work rate and ability to adapt to two different coaches in a small amount of time as well. So we love the elite speed that he's going to bring, the ability to shoot it and score it, and, and the ability to get in the paint and make others better. That's one thing that he really talked about when we spoke with him is loves getting paint touches and getting other guys' shots and opportunities to score. Doug Mouton, go ahead. Yeah, look, just in the two Zoom things we sat in with him, he just seemed like a really likable guy. How does that sort of fit in, and does that really play a role when you're talking about a guy in a draft and, and what you can do? So sort of how does that play into this? In, in, in a great, great question, Doug. I think for us, and we've always talked about um, with our culture here, is we want to bring in high-character, hard-working, competitive young men. And I think uh, – Kyra really fits that here. Um, he really works hard. He wants to get better. Um, when you talk to him, he's you know he's soft spoken. Obviously, small town kid, but you can tell he has a desire to be great and be the best that he can be. And those are the kind of people that we want here. Hey, Trajan, uh, Christian Clark with Noel.com here. Um, I'm just curious, what are your thoughts on um, Kyra and, and Lonzo Ball fitting together? I mean, I guess we had to put a label on it. Both are point guards, but like Kyra said in his interview, that he feels like those are you know, it's a player he can play alone. Yeah, I think this is a guard league. Um, it's it's really fast paced, a lot of possessions, and uh, I think when you look on our roster now, we have a lot of guard play, a lot of guys that can play together, um, can make plays that are skilled, can handle the ball, and can make shots. And I think when you see the way that this league is trending, the more players that you can have on the floor with speed uh, and skill, um, it gives you a better chance to to uh, to score and get up and down the floor and make plays for not only themselves but for other players on the team. So we're excited about how the, our players are going to complement each other um, coming into this next season. Uh, Trajan Andrew uh, with ESPN. Building on that a little bit since Christian just stole my original question. Um, how do you uh, – Kyra called it a match made in heaven with him and Zion on the break. How do you see those two guys uh, – kind of fitting together in this in the uh, in the offense. Yeah, I think the one thing that we talked to Kyra about and, and one question we asked him is what's the most joy that you get out of playing? And he said, like I discussed earlier, getting paint touches and making other people better. So uh, we have a lot of shooting in the, on the team. If that kid can get some paint touches, spray out to shooters and throw lobs or make other people better, um, dump offs, that, that's what he wants to do. Uh, and was, with his elite speed and transition, or even in the half court, that's one thing that we're very intrigued um, that he can do for us. Trajan, this is Fletcher from NBC in New Orleans. Were you surprised by the way the draft unfolded, given the fact that you normally see a flurry of trades, and I don't think we saw one until pick 15 or 16, and not to... I, I, I don't expect you to answer this, but did you all try to make any moves or field calls or make any calls regarding moving up or even moving back from your pick? I think you always try to move to a targeted guy, but it was we found out pretty early in this process it was going to be pretty impossible to move up because everything was on the clock. Um, and then people didn't really pick up their phones on the clock. So um, you always look to be aggressive, but... Look, we got a guy that we targeted at 13. If you would have told us we could have got him a few weeks ago, we would have been incredibly happy. So that that's exactly where we're at today. I tried to uh, Ron Walker with the Times Picayune. When we talked to um, Kyle tonight, he said that you know he kind of patterned himself after um, the Aaron Fox and, and Lou Williams. Are there some guys that you'd say, who would you compare him to just as far as his style of play? Yeah, I think uh, a, a guy that our, our – um, our scouting group has compared him to is De'Aaron um, in terms of his speed, ability to shoot it from the perimeter and, and, and really pick up. I think when you 
<clears throat> watch a lot of film of him. He is light, but he does really avoid the screens on defense and really gives effort. So I think he's going to be a guy that, that can play both sides of the ball and, and really put a lot of pressure on the defense, pu pushing in pre transition, attacking switches, and really getting downhill off, uh, off pick and roll play, uh, in the, especially in the middle of the court. So I'm sure Stan and his staff are going to put him in positions to when he can do those things and really be useful for uh, for our team on the court in terms of creating and making other guys better. What's up, Tranger? This is uh, Will again from The Athletic. Uh, something you mentioned and Kyra mentioned uh, was his speed and his ability to play in transition. And obviously you guys played very fast last year, but I think with Stan coming in, I think people are, were obviously going to expect some changes, but do you think – the Kyra selection kind of shows how much you guys are going to continue to prioritize playing with that same kind of pace. Yeah, I think when you talk pace, you don't just talk about after misses or after turnovers. You also talk about pace and half-court play. And I think his ability to get by in the half-court on, like I said, pick-and-roll play or even switches is something that intrigued us. Um, I think when the game slows down, you still need to have guys that can get in the paint, and he gives us an option to do that. Um, and he, he also can make shots from the perimeter, which is intriguing. So guys are going to have to respect that run at him, which gives him an even greater ability to get paint touches and score for himself or create for others. Hey, Trajan, Christian Clark here again. Um, the phrase I heard Griff use a couple of times over the past few weeks was sustainable run. Um, the position you guys are in now, do you, do you feel like you guys are in like a spot where a sustainable run is possible? I think we have to keep, we're always going to keep on bettering our team, bettering the roster, and, and, and for us to keep getting better and keep growing, we have a young team. Our guys have to get better. They have to continue to develop, and that's what we're going to push them to do. That's what Stan and, and their staff will continue to push these guys to do, and, um, you know, we're going to keep working. Uh, I don't think we're ever satisfied with the roster that we've built. We're going to continue to try to put people in places that, that make us a, a more competitive team, but we think we've done that tonight. This is David Grubb from uh, The Bird Rights. My question would be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, how important was it to find a player who could contribute this year knowing um, that, that you have this short time between the draft and camp and the amount of turnover that you've already had with the trade that you've made already? Um, was that a target or um, were you just looking for the best possible fit? I think in uh... – for, for us, it's, it's, it's the best possible player that's on the board at the time who has the most upside. Uh, he is a young player having reclassed, um, didn't play his senior year in high school. His senior year in high school was basically a freshman at Alabama, so he's really like a freshman coming out after his first year in terms of his age. So for us, is the upside from Kyra, does he get on the floor this year? I'm sure he'll compete for it and he'll get some time, but for us it's the upside and, and kind of looking toward the future and what he could be. Um, but we do think we uh, he can get on the court this year if he competes for it. Um, but it's 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 definitely like it was talked about before as being sustainable, and, and we think he can be an, a great player in this league for a long time. Yeah, hey, this is Doug Mouton at WWTV in New Orleans again. Um, when you say elite speed, and I've heard that about him a bunch. Um, was he the fastest guy in the draft? Would he be the fastest guy on your roster immediately? And and what kind of value do you put in just that single trait? It's a good question. I don't know that he'll be the fastest. He was probably, I think we thought he was the fastest guy uh, in the draft, but that wasn't really the reason why. It obviously was a huge characteristic, which plays a big part in the game of basketball, being able to push pace and being able to get by at will and get in the paint, cause, put a lot of pressure on the defense, but um, the character, the competitive nature, how much he's gotten better, um, not only last year or this year, but within this year. I think I, I saw him down at the Battle for Atlantis early on, and the strides that he'd made with the new coach from the first month of the season to the last month of the season was tremendous. So his ability to pick up stuff, learn, implement it, and really make an impact on winning. Um, was intriguing to us, the character of the kid. So it wasn't just the elite speed, the ability to make other people better, the ability to shoot the ball. All that together we think is going to have a big impact for his success at this level. Hey, Trey, Jen, this is Jim Eichenhofer. Um, one of the things that Kyra mentioned earlier tonight was that he's he actually watched the Pelicans a lot the last couple seasons. 
um, while he was at Alabama. Did you guys get a sense that he was pretty familiar with the roster and he knew a lot about the team? And also, um, did you c- kind of get a, a, an indication from him, either from when you initially spoke to him or recently, of how um, optimistic and enthusiastic he, w- he was about the potential of coming to play in New Orleans? I do think he was very excited. Um, we did talk about he did talk about some of the guys on our roster. Obviously, he's a a kid who's not far from here, so I, I could understand the intrigue in watching us play, and, and and we were on TV a whole lot. So um, he is knowledgeable about our team, but I think he and his his agent were very optimistic and excited if he would have the opportunity to come here and be part of our organization. So it's it's a really really good match for both sides. I'm glad it happened. But we did talk about it. Um, he and his agent and Bryson Graham, our, our assistant GM and his agent, stayed in touch um, a lot during the last month or two months leading up to this night. All right, Shamit, go ahead. This is going to be the last question for Trajan. Hey, Trajan. This is Shamit from Bourbon Street Shots. You mentioned about Kyra potentially being able to play this season. Do you guys plan on utilizing the G League any to further his development? It's a good question. I mean, if it, if it becomes – easy to do we would uh there's a lot of questions that surround the g league and how that is actually going to be put together um and so we there's a call next week you know kind of detailing what that's going to look like but it's it's going to be different this year so i assume that um kyle will spend a lot of time with with us in in new orleans and, and might not spend a whole lot of time with the g league unless it becomes somewhat simple um but it the g league could be mapped out a little bit differently than in years past, but we'll, we'll see. We'll hopefully see that here in, in next week or the week after. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Trajan. Sure.